Hey there, my name is Cassie Torresias, and eight years ago, I launched my own online graphic design studio and booked a one-way ticket to travel the world in pursuit of my own freedom-filled life. I now own a multi-million dollar online business, The Bucket List Bombshells, teaching other women how to do the same, alongside my best friend, co-founder, and podcast co-host, Shay Brown. Around here, we believe that your crazy dreams aren't crazy, and that it's time for you to start creating the life and career that you dream about too. Whether you want to travel and work remotely, or simply just want to be your own boss, it's possible to live out your passion and purpose without just scraping by. We know that this path isn't always easy to navigate though, so we're here to help you. From making a career change, starting and growing your own business, balancing life and business, and most importantly, pursuing your own freedom-filled life. Get ready for real, relatable stories and advice on your journey towards something more. We serve it up BFF style, so pour yourself that third cup of coffee and let's dive in. Welcome to the Freedom-Filled Life Podcast. Hey there, it's Shay here. I can't wait for you to listen to today's episode. As the holidays are approaching and we can see the new year on the horizon, if you're anything like me, you're already thinking about your 2022 goals and what you want to bring into your life in this new year. Maybe you're thinking of changing your career path to find something more fulfilling. I think we've all spent a lot of time over the past two years reevaluating our priorities. And that's exactly where my guest today was in the height of the 2020 pandemic. Elena Radovan had just been laid off and was unsure what her next career move was. It was around that time when she stumbled upon us and our community of women business owners. That's when she decided that it was time to learn some new skills and maybe start her own business. In 2020, Elena enrolled in the Bucket List Bombshells Academy, our online course curriculum that gives you the exact framework you need to be your own boss and successfully launch your online business. And here's an extra juicy piece of news. When you enroll in the Bucket List Bombshells Academy this week only, you'll also receive our new 2022 Dream Career Accelerator Bundle, valued at over $5,000, but giving it away totally for free. Inside this bundle, you'll get a live 2022 goal setting and vision planning workshop to kick off your year, guide you through your exact new year planning steps, and create a plan to accomplish your 2022 goals together. You're also going to get three live group hot seat sessions on Zoom where we will personally coach you one-on-one as you tackle your goals and help you overcome any blocks in your way using our decade of business experience. And lastly, you're going to get your personal accountability small group, a group of tight knit other BB Academy students to connect with each week on Zoom and hold you accountable as you're pursuing your goals together. If you're curious how enrolling in the Bucketless Bombshells Academy could bring you the life you've always dreamed of, I'm sitting down today with a former Academy student to talk all about how she made this dream life a reality. Let me introduce you to Elena Radovan. Elena is the founder of Elena Creative Co., where she offers branding and website design for ambitious, service-based entrepreneurs. Elena brings her clients' visions to life through strategic branding to create high-converting, client-magnetizing websites. In our conversation today, Elena, in the height of the pandemic, decided to take her first steps to creating a more stable career path for herself. She gives us insight into how she held herself accountable to launching her business within 90 days and how she landed her first client two weeks after she launched. Elena loves using the term taking messy action, and she gives us the real talk on how this has led to the things she is most proud of in both her business and her life. I can't wait for you to listen into today's episode because Elena breaks everything down into actionable steps that you can take to make big moves in your life and career this new year. All right, let's dive into our conversation. 
Well, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today's episode. I am so excited because I have one of our past Buckleist Bombshell students with me today, Elena, and she is the founder of Elena Creative Co. And we're just really excited to chat with you today and have you on the podcast because I know that many of our listeners right now are maybe thinking of the new year, thinking of a change, maybe considering a career change. And there's just been so much that has happened the past two years and a lot of people have moved online, I think that the idea or the concept isn't so radical anymore to start your own online business and live a life of joy, freedom, adventure, and purpose. And I know that's something that you've achieved, Elena, and we're sitting down today to chat about your journey and your experiences creating this dream life. And I'm really excited to get into it because for our listeners to get to know you and learn how in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic, you actually built and launched your online business. So I'm sure we'll get into that. But before we dive into your full story, can you tell me a little bit about the business you own and the services that you offer and the type of clients that you work with? Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm so excited to be here. And I was telling Shay that this is honestly like a dream come true for me because like not too long ago, I was reading the student spotlights and now to be featured is so crazy and full circle. But Shay mentioned I'm a branding and website designer and I work mostly with people like female entrepreneurs kind of in the creative space and the online space. So I love working with virtual assistants, coaches, and I'm now branching out into kind of the event space with like photographers, event planners planners, all of that, and really just helping them establish their online presence with branding and then having that virtual storefront of a website to really help market themselves. Yeah, I love that. And let's rewind a little bit and tell us about like how and when you started your business. Was it on accident? Was it intentional? You know, how did that come about? It was a hundred percent accident. I was kind of, you know, two years ago now, I guess when COVID happened, an event planner working full-time at a hotel and, you know, pretty much night and day I got laid off and I just, Mm. you know, I was like, okay, it's not going to last that long. Like I'll be back in two weeks. Mm -hmm. And then months went by and I'm like, oh shoot, I need to figure something out. (laughs) (laughs) And I really just kind of took my time off, like took the unfortunate situation and like tried Mm -hmm. to make the most out of it. Mm -hmm. And I told myself like, you know, this is, I think this is a sign that I need to try and take back control of my life and start in my own business. And I've always had a gut feeling inside of me that I was capable of starting my own business, but I like, I never knew where to start, what it was going to entail, like where to Uh. even how to do it. And I just remember doing weeks and weeks of research, going down the rabbit hole of like how to make money online. And <laughs> like I signed up for all the freebies, all the, you know, free courses that I could. And then I was like, okay, I feel like I need structure because I have all this information coming at me. And now I like, I know it's possible because I started like seeing like all these people on Instagram and Facebook, you know, really like making six figure, seven figure businesses by themselves and building a team. I was like, wow, you know, it was just really inspiring. And then Uh, I think I came across the Buckless Bombshells. It was one ad on Facebook. And then I just went through the whole rabbit hole of student spotlights. (laughs) It was funny because when I went on Instagram and I looked you guys up, I was already following you. Because I think when you guys first launched, you guys came across my feed. I was like, oh, like this looks really interesting. And then I followed you and then I never really got into it until, Mm. you know, two years ago, but yeah. So that's kind of how it started. And then once I had that course at the time, it was like the three separate courses. So I purchased Mm -hmm. all three and I was like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I now have structure to follow. And I was just like in the learning phase and yeah, I just really took the course and ran with it. And you guys were like the launch of my business really like without you guys, I wouldn't be here today. So I think oh my you. gosh, <laughs> I've enjoyed watching your journey and thank you for the kind words. And the, the courses that Elena is referencing, is called the Buckless Bombshells Academy. And it's so interesting because you had said that you had enrolled in all three courses. And at the time we did have them for enrollment separately, but because we have spoken to so many students, just like you, we now are offering it as a full course curriculum under the Buckless Bombshells Academy, because we know that you guys need all three of those courses. Mm-hmm, definitely. So 
Yeah. I'm so excited for you and your journey and where you're, you're heading, but I wanted to know when you first started out, how did you go about choosing your services? How did you land on the services that you now offer? Yeah. I mean, really like at the time, like I said, I was just in the learning phase and I didn't really know what I was doing, but I was just trying to learn everything. And Mm -hmm. as I was doing the courses of like the design courses and the tech courses, I was just trying to reflect on what I enjoyed most. And it was kind of hard because I did enjoy like Oh, I love the tech part. I love the creative part, Mm -hmm. but I just kind of really fell in love with the creative side of branding. Mm -hmm. And then like being a website designer too, that's kind of where the technical stuff comes in. And it's just kind of like best of both worlds there. But yeah, like as far as establishing the services at first, I really just focused on one. So I started with just branding because I was toying with doing you know, being a branding designer, being a virtual assistant, you know, and I was just like, I think I just need to do branding, focus on this. And then, so that's what I launched with. I just launched with like one or two branding packages because I didn't want to overwhelm myself. It depends on how you work, but I feel like if you're easily overwhelmed, you kind of just want to take bits and pieces out of time. So I was like, I'm just going to start with one and then I can expand, I can pivot and see how it goes. Yeah. So I started with branding and then eventually I added on a a website and then I also added on like Instagram graphics as well. And it just kind of came together that way. (laughs) Yeah. I love that. And I think that as you start out, I think a lot of people feel like, especially some of our students that are enrolled and they're just getting started, feel like they have to choose one type of service and that's it. They're going to offer it for the rest of time. But the more and more that we speak with our students and see our students grow and develop, and just like how Cass and I grew over time in our business, Mm -hmm. at some point you learn new skills, you learn more skills, or you get more niche down in your business and you're able to then, you know, maybe make some changes later on. You're never always stuck. And that's what I love about being your own boss. You're just have that freedom to do what you want to do. So you started your business in the midst of the pandemic being laid off. (laughs) How did you feel like a mentally and emotionally when starting this business? How did you make that decision in such a turbulent time? It was definitely rough. And I kept going back and forth. I was like, Mm -hmm. do I want to go back to like a nine to five job. And I really didn't. Once I got the taste of just knowing that it was possible to have your own business and like have control over your time and your freedom and your location. I was like, I don't think I ever want to go back to the nine to five. I did love event planning and I loved my job, but you know, there's always that that pressure of, you know, you always have to get to work on time and, you know, stay here nine to five. And for me, it was like eight 30 to six 30, but yeah, it was just kind of like mentally, I just kind of had to work through that. And, you know, I definitely had imposter syndrome and limiting beliefs and, but I just kind of had to like fully just believe in myself and give it like 110% because I think if I didn't give it 110%, I wouldn't be here right now because, you know, I really like put in my all. And I will say I was kind of put into a fortunate situation where, you know, I got laid off. So I was unemployed and I had unemployment money coming in to Mm -hmm. kind of support me at the time. So, you know, I think you just kind of have to reflect if you are in a nine to five currently, maybe just see how you can balance it at first. And then once you know, you have the momentum and your own business, then you can take the the full leap. It was definitely rough, but you know, I got through it and I still have imposter syndrome today, but that's why so many people in the online and entrepreneur space, like they always talk about mindset and manifestation. Mm -hmm. And I I just see the power in in those things really. Yeah. And I love that you said that because I think once you become your own boss too, or you're in this world of research mode or trying to make a career change, you start discovering other things that you probably wouldn't have really brought onto your radar in your typical nine to five routine. And you do the same things and you kind of don't really look outside of that. Were you surprised to find these resources and have they like impacted your life in a big way? Yeah, definitely. Like, like I said, I went down the rabbit hole of seeing like all these different ways to make money online. I knew that it was possible, but again, like I didn't know what I was capable of doing, but like just having those resources there, I knew that I could learn and have build the skill set. because prior to this, like I was a full-time event planner and, you know, I graduated college in 2018. So my only experience is in event planning. And when Mm. a global pandemic hit, (laughs) 
events are no longer. Yeah. <laughs> I went through a crisis of like, oh my gosh, like what can I do now? My whole skill set and experiences in event planning, which is an industry that no longer exists. Like at the time, obviously it's coming back now. Yeah. I think you just kind of have to do some internal work too. Like if you're thinking of starting an online business, but you don't know what skills you have, like there are so many skills and resources Mm. out there that will help you learn. And then also too, you want to think about the experience that you do currently have as well, which is kind of why Mm. I'm doing branding and website design now, but I'm uh, starting to attract like event planners. So I'm like tying in my past experience too. I love that. I think you nailed it. It's a mix of both. It's taking your past experiences from jobs, internships, or even just passions that you have and combining Uh, it with the, the new skills or with learning or trying something new. And I think it's a kind of a mesh of both that help you uncover what you want to do, but also give you that boost of confidence where, you know, some of it you're bringing in is your own experience. Mm -hmm. And I find that so interesting that now, I mean, it doesn't surprise me, but I find it very interesting now that you're working with event planning clients, because you probably know how to relate to them, how to, you know, what their needs are on a Mm -hmm. different basis, but now you're just doing it from a different perspective. You're Mm -hmm. offering branding and website design and that instead of actually planning the events. So you're Mm -hmm. working for the event planners now. I think that sometimes we get too pigeonholed into, you know, the 10 industries or the typical ways that you see, but who would have thought, okay, I'm of an event planner. I need a branding person and a website. And now you're that person, like you've played roles. Very cool. So on your journey, as you were like finding resources, enrolling in courses, I know that you enrolled inside the Bucklist Bombshells Academy. Mm -hmm. How did that impact your business journey? It literally, like I said, you guys are the reason why I have a business. (laughs) The Academy was so like laid out and structured and it taught me all of the skill set. And also it helped me get into the mindset of being a business owner. And then also walked me through how to apply the skills to eventually launch. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and I want to note that like your academy is amazing, but you also have to, you know, put the accountability on yourself and like really give yourself the structure. Cause I think sometimes it can be easy, like, especially if you're going down the rabbit hole of like having all this information, I forget what they call it. Decision fatigue and shiny objects in general. Yeah, <laughs> I think once you like, especially with this course, just stick to it. Maybe create a schedule for yourself because that's what I did. I mean, at the time again, I was unemployed, so I wasn't doing anything during my day, and I really I treated it like a full time job. Like I woke up, and the first thing that I did was really you know just dive into these courses. Yeah. I took notes, and the thing that really helped me, which I love about your guys' academy, is the mock up projects mm. because you know I came from an event planner background, didn't have any branding experience. Like those mock-ups really helped me not only like gain my skill set, but I had a portfolio to walk away with in the end, which I launched with. And I think that definitely helped me land my first few clients too, because I could see the work that I'm capable of doing. Yes. Yes. That's been one of the biggest feedback pieces we've gotten from Mm -hmm. students that the mock client projects, it's just that opportunity to test your skills, also get feedback from the community igniter experts to improve Mm -hmm. your skills. And like you said, have a portfolio to showcase so that people can see that you can implement the things that you say you can and creating Mm -hmm. a fake client or a faux scenario client is, doesn't take away from the fact of the end result of the project is showcasing your skills. So I love that you utilize that and that that would seem to be helpful within your client Mm -hmm. journey. Cause I see all the projects come through in the communities and they're just gorgeous. And it's just Mm -hmm. so fun to give feedback and to see you guys create those and build your own portfolios. I gotta say, I love your guys' community is like one of my favorites. Cause I remember when I was going through the courses, like after I finished a a mock-up project I would share it and I got like all this feedback and like just positive comments that really just helped me stay motivated and kept me accountable too this episode is brought to you by the Bucketless Bombshells Academy eight years ago I left my uninspiring nine-to-five job and booked a one-way ticket to Mexico in pursuit of my own freedom-filled life That led me to start my own online virtual assistant company where I had the freedom to work from anywhere. I designed my own schedule and do work that I love. All of a sudden, work became a source of excitement. And most importantly, I felt inspired to open up my laptop each day. 
The Bucket List Bombshells Academy is our comprehensive course curriculum of online courses where we will teach you the step-by-step of learning in-demand, online skills, and building your very own online business. And this week only, we have an extra surprise gift we're including with your enrollment into the Bucket List Bombshells Academy. You'll receive our new 2022 Dream Career Accelerator Bundle, valued at over $5,000, but we're giving it away totally for free. Included in this bundle is a live 2022 goal setting and vision planning workshop to kick off your year, three live group hot seat sessions on Zoom where we'll personally coach you one-on-one using our decade of business experience, and you'll be placed into a personal accountability small group, a group of tight-knit Bucket List Bombshell Academy students to connect with each week on Zoom and hold you accountable to pursuing your goals together. Plus, you'll have support from us and our expert community igniters to guide you and answer your questions every step of the way. You don't have to have a business idea or even an idea of what you want to do next in your career. If you know you're ready to make a change and pursue your own freedom-filled life, we're here to help you take the next step. Join us in the Bucket List Bombshells Academy or learn more by visiting bucketlistbombshells.com slash academy2022. You were talking about accountability and creating structures, and I know that you didn't have a full-time job, but how did you hold yourself accountable and how long did it really take you dedicating time to your business before you felt like you really were landing your first client, let's say? Yeah. So I would say the whole Academy took me about two to three months to complete. And when I say complete, that means like watch all of the the modules, go through all the homework and create a portfolio. So by the end of the three months, I pretty much had like everything I needed. The first month was a little bit more trial and error for me. Like Mm -hmm. I went through everything. And then the second month is when I started to reflect and figure Mm -hmm. out what I want to kind of commit to for now for the launch. And by the end of like the second month for me, I was like, okay, I want to really hold myself accountable and Mm -hmm. just start an Instagram account, just start kind of teasing what I'm doing. I gave myself a launch date that I stuck to and I announced Mm -hmm. it to the world. Oh, good job. (laughs) I'm launching on August 31st, 2020. So, and it was, so it's funny because I actually, I created a separate account. It wasn't on my personal. So I created a separate Mm -hmm. account at first. Mm -hmm. I think too, like it's pretty common for outside opinions to really affect you. So, and I just didn't want any of that. And I was like, I'm just going to create a second account and really just, you know, build my own community, not having Mm -hmm. to worry about what my friends and family is going to think about me. Mm -hmm. So I like kept that account kind of like secret from my personal Mm -hmm. network for about a month. And within a month, I started just like already building this whole community online on Instagram, just connecting with a lot of people that were doing something similar to me in yeah. bucket list bombshells too. So mm-hmm. really like building my community. And then within the month, like the last month, that's when I kind of got my whole website together. And then I stuck to my due date. I launched. And then I think a week before I launched my website, that's when I announced it on my personal network too. Honestly, I know that it's scary to, you know, share something that might not be like stereotypical mm-hmm. job and it's like kind of scary just to like, share that with your friends and family but I was pretty surprised just like all the support that I received I think it's I don't know you just kind of have to push back push past those thoughts mm-hmm. because really like you know those opinions don't matter just it, you have to focus on yourself on your business you have to believe in yourself because anyone that doubts you like use those doubts as fuel for you that's what I always say I love that. And I think a lot of people, a lot of our students have been afraid to announce it to their personal network, but Mm -hmm. I think that all of them have been pleasantly surprised that, you know, most of the time our personal networks are our biggest advocates. It's actually even a part of, you know, some client finding strategies, you know, utilizing Mm -hmm. your network to have them reach out and to recommend you and to send you referrals too, because they're going to be the people that want to cheer you on and support you. I understand some people don't always have that same reaction, but it's so interesting and I think eye-opening, you know, you started kind of having your business one sort of private and then, you know, it's a part of who you are. And at some point Uh you got to share that with the world. So I love that Mm -hmm. advice and that perspective that you had to share there. Yeah. And like you said, like my majority of my first clients came from my personal network, even people that I knew, or like Mm -hmm. my friends referred me to, to people. And that really kind of helped get the ball rolling. 
Oh, that's amazing. So how long after you launched your site, utilizing your network or other strategies, how long mm-hmm. did it take until you landed your first client? Yeah. So I honestly was really surprised. It was about two weeks after I launched, I booked three or four clients. I was like, wow. What <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I really go by the motto, just take messy action and like figure mm-hmm. it out as you go. Because when I launched, I'll say it right now, like I didn't really have like contracts set up and my workflow was still like a little bit all over the place. But especially when you first start out, it's definitely gonna be trial and error. So I think, you know, a lot of people in the entrepreneur space too are like perfectionists and they want to have mm-hmm. everything figured out right away before they launch. Mm-hmm. But what I find is that, you know, if you are a perfectionist, you might just keep pushing your due date off and off until it's perfect. Launch when you are confident that you have like the core things that you need Mm -hmm. to launch and then just kind of figure it out as you go. But yeah, other than the, uh, like my personal network being a few of my first clients, another tip that helped me, and you know, this might not be for everybody, but in the beginning too, I was kind of trying to build up my own like confidence as well. So Mm -hmm. I did a giveaway and so I, I gave away like my smallest package. So I'm not saying like, go do everything for free. You know, I wanted to kind of create excitement. So I did do a giveaway and then I picked one from that, but I ended up getting one of my first paid clients from, I like followed up on everyone that participated in that giveaway Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. that shows you, you know, your services in demand. These are the people that would want you if your services were free, obviously. But that being said, like, it doesn't hurt to follow Mm -hmm. up. And I think I got one or two clients just by following up and saying like, Hey, thanks for uh, participating in the giveaway. Unfortunately, you didn't win, but I would love to tell you about my services. And yeah, that's how I kind of got my first two. Wow. That's yeah, really smart. And I think we also talk about like outreach, just reaching out to people that you want to work with based on your research and yeah, asking them what are their needs? Here's what I have to offer. Here's what I see. Maybe you need help with. I think just any sort of initiative taking that you can take in the beginning is really Mm going to help you land those clients. So from there, those first client finding strategies, do you still implement similar strategies or have you found other ones that work well for you? Yeah. I mean, for, I would say the first two to three months, it was kind of word of mouth through Instagram. Still to this day, like I get most of my clients through either Instagram or referrals. Mm -hmm. So it's once you start getting clients, it's that snowball effect that you guys talk about. And it just, you know, never stops. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. Yeah. (laughs) I love that. And So as you've snowballed, as you've grown, I'm sure that you've taken on clients and kind of found clients with different personality types, clients with different industries and different businesses. And in that experience, what is it that you like most about working with the clients that you work with now? Yeah, that's a a great question. And I will say that again, it's a lot of trial and error. Like I I really do love all of my clients, but you know, I have had a couple kind of nightmare clients here and there. I don't really like calling them nightmare clients, but you know, every client teaches you something new and those Mm -hmm. clients that might've been a little bit more difficult, they just kind of taught me like, okay, maybe I don't really like working in this niche or, you know, it just kind of, it, it makes you learn who you do like to work with and the industries, but I just really like what all my clients have in common, especially Mm -hmm. right now. A lot of them are small business owners and they're starting out. So whenever I get on a call with someone, they just like, I feel their excitement through the screen. And I just feel Mm -hmm. like their gratitude of me helping them. And they really value investing in their business and investing Mm -hmm. in their online business because, you know, branding and website design, hiring a branding website designer isn't you know, super cheap. It is an investment and just like having that excitement. And also like Mm -hmm. I'm their accountability person because, you know, people come to me because they don't want to do it themselves because, Mm -hmm. you know, when they do it themselves, they either one, they're super over analytical about their own work Mm -hmm. and they just go through indecisiveness or they don't have the skill set, they don't have the creativity. So, you know, it's just knowing that I can help them with something that they lack just makes me, makes me happy. Yeah. I love that. And speaking of your happiness, what Mm -hmm. else has, you know, running a business been able to provide for you in your life? Yeah. I mean, freedom really, you know, 
I will say that some people like on Instagram, I see like everyone do like their morning routines and all of this, but I just really like sleeping in sometimes and like having the freedom to take a nap every now and then. But other than that, it really is the freedom of like, so I'm currently in LA and Mm -hmm. my family's in Hawaii. So Mm -hmm. I don't have to ask permission to take off and see my family. Like I can just Mm -hmm. hop on a plane if I want to go see them. But yeah, it's really just, you know, crafting my own schedule based on what works best for me, because, you know, a nine to five job doesn't work for everyone. I yeah. I don't think a lot of people, I don't think we really work that way. And it's really kind of figuring out when you're most productive and making um, use of that time and, and just like having the balance. I will say also after this call today, I'm picking up a puppy. I wouldn't have been able to have a dog if I was Mm -hmm. still nine to five. So Mm -hmm. I'm so thankful for that. (laughs) I am so excited for you. I am such a dog person that have not made the commitment, even though I don't work a nine to five, obviously (laughs) I haven't been ready to take on the responsibility, but I Mm -hmm. am obsessed with other people's dogs. So I'm always like, I'll dog sit, I'll dog walk. So I'm very happy for you. I feel like (laughs) I'm finally in the place where it just, it makes sense. Cause I just like you, I'm a dog person. I love dogs. I've never had one of my own, but now it's like, okay, I'm in a place where my business is pretty steady. I work from home. And honestly, when you work from home, it gets lonely. (laughs) So, and that's another thing too, like having an online business, it might get lonely at times, but if that ever happens, just, you know, you have the community the online community, the Bucketless Bombshells community, like I said, is amazing. And even just like getting out, going to cafes and, you know, being a digital nomad, like you and Cassie, just traveling the world, like there's just so, so much freedom that comes with it. Have you found a lot of communities of like-minded people and other entrepreneurs? And how do you go about finding those? Yeah, mostly through Instagram and Facebook groups. I'm actually going Mm -hmm. to a networking event next weekend. But yeah, I would say mostly through Facebook groups. There's so many out there just searching Mm -hmm. like maybe whatever your niche is or like women entrepreneurs and typing in your city. It just helps you. And the other thing too, is I love working at co-working spaces, just so you're surrounded by people in productive environments. Most people in co-working spaces are are also running their own business too. So Yeah. yeah. So just putting yourselves where one, like people that are similar to you are, and also where your ideal clients might be too. That's so smart. Yeah. We love working from co-working spaces and I still pop to a co-working space sometimes here and just that, you know, that surrounded by that energy, I think can Mm -hmm. have an impact on you and your business. Have you personally had any, you know, experiences that have impacted your business from, you know, going out into these communities and connecting with other entrepreneurs? Yeah. I mean, personally so far, most of my clients really just come from online, from Instagram. I have yet to really convert someone that I met at a co-working space but I think too like you know it's important to not just like pitch yourself right away to everyone you meet build the relationships first and then like the pitch can come when it feels right but yeah that's definitely one one of the goals I have is really to kind of put myself out there a little bit Mm -hmm. more now that things are kind of opening up I do I love having you know the freedom of having an online business because I have clients from all around the world. It's so crazy. My very first client was from Australia. My Mm. second client was from Canada. And then (laughs) I had one in London um, and then someone from Dubai and then South Africa. I was like, this is crazy. And that's just, that's again, the beauty of having an online business is you really can work with anyone from around the world. Yeah, especially with the tools out there that you can use to communicate, you know, via Zoom or using Slack or Asana, some of these tools that, you know, are kind of well known, but maybe not so much, which I would love for you to speak to some of the tools that you use in your business on a day to day. Yeah. And all of the tools that I started using, it was because of the Academy. Like I use Asana, pretty much all the ones you already listed. So (laughs) um, I do Asana for my client timeline. So every single client that I onboard, they get an Mm -hmm. Asana link. So they see exactly like when I am working on something, when they'll Mm -hmm. get something from me. And also they give me all their feedback through Asana. And then 
I do use Slack. I actually um, launched a partnership package recently with a copywriter and an SEO expert, and we've been using Slack to communicate. So I have that. And then I, there's a few networking groups on Slack too. I use Dubsado for mm-hmm. contracts and invoices, proposals, mm-hmm. Calendly to schedule my calls. What else? I know I have a whole list. Dropbox yeah. for all the files. That's a um, great list. Those are like the top ones to use. Mm-hmm. And then I think it's really cool how you explained, you know, how you use them, how they're implemented. Cause I think it, it continues to surprise me because I guess I've been in the industry so long when mm-hmm. someone, you know, needs clarification on Slack or Asana. And I'm like, yes, of course, like the, yes, there are tools. And I'm so excited when I get to talk about those mm-hmm. tools because I've been using them for so long. And I think it's just so great, the infrastructure that we have to be able to run an online business completely mm-hmm. remotely and work with clients in countries around the world. I think that's fantastic. So to sort of bring it back to when you first got started, what sort of challenges did you face? Definitely limiting beliefs, I would say, was Mm. the main challenge. Kind of like I would go through phases of, you know, being, oh, my gosh, like this is definitely going to work out. I'm going to be a six figure entrepreneur in the next year. And then the next day I'd be like, what am I doing with my life? So, yeah, definitely having limiting beliefs, but it's just kind of pushing past that. I would say other challenges too. It's funny because coming from a branding and website designer, you would think that I wouldn't have a challenge of branding myself, but I think that is, it is kind of a challenge. Like, especially in the beginning, I was like, there's so many branding and website designers out there. Like how, why me? So kind of really like self-reflecting on that and figuring out like how to position myself. Mm. Also, this is a really small challenge, but I think a lot of people get fixated on this too, is picking a name. (laughs) And so I just ended up with my name pretty much. So Elena, Mm -hmm. and then I I tacked on Creative Co because I just kind of saw that floating around a lot. Yeah, I did the same thing when I also was going to name my business. I ended up calling it Shay Arlena Media. Then I just went with that. So my first and middle name, and I was like, okay, that's good. I think that it can be, if you're a creative person, it's definitely fun. Like we have inside of our mini branding bootcamp, you know, some creative ways of coming Mm -hmm. up with a name. And if you have a story behind it, so a lot of people have really cool stories behind their names. But at the end of the day, if you don't have any of that. It's okay. You can literally yeah. name your business, your name and yeah. whatever kind of makes sense for what your company is. <laughs> yeah, I know. And like, after I named that, and after I got my LLC, I was like, oh my gosh, like, do I want to change my name? I was like, you know what? No, like I'm going to stick with <laughs> a creative code. Yeah. It's really like just such a small part of your business. And I will say too, that like, when you name your business, like if you do stick with your personal name, that kind of gives you the freedom. Like if you ever pivot in the future Mm. to, you know, keep your name and you can just kind of pivot your services. And speaking of pivoting services, when you started out, it sounds like you're still doing the same thing that you were doing when you first started out branding Mm -hmm. and website design. I know that sometimes along the way we do change and pivot. Have you experienced that at all? Yeah, I mean, I definitely so like I said, starting out, I was focused more on branding. And as Mm -hmm. I kind of got uh, more and more clients, I found that I really love the whole website design process a little bit more, but Mm. I still do offer branding and Instagram, but I am kind of not really pivoting, but just kind of shifting my services next year, I'm gonna launch a website template shop. I I love the creativity that goes behind it. Also the creativity and the technical side. So that's the project that I'm working on. And hopefully that will be up by the end of January or February. I'm not Very again, cool. taking that. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you seem to be pretty clear on your dates though. Like when you pick a date, yeah. you get it launched. so I have full faith. I will see that in the new year and that's super Thank exciting. You. And I love the fact that as business owners, we can change and pivot mm-hmm. and it's relatively straightforward. You know, we don't have a brick and mortar store. We can yeah. simply change our website, the services that we offer and start finding and landing those types of clients. Taking a look back on your business journey, what is something that you're most proud of? Oh, honestly, I feel like I'm just, I'm most proud of sticking with it and kind of believing in myself because, you know, yes, I I was kind of fortunate to kind of get clients right away, but you know, Mm -hmm. there are some uh, slow periods and you kind of just have to keep that faith in yourself, believe Mm -hmm. in yourself and Yeah. I mean, I think that's really what it comes down to for me as far as being proud of myself. (laughs) 
I love that. Yeah, I think that sometimes we forget to look. We don't always remember the challenges and we forget to sort of look at the things that mm-hmm. brought us that joy and the things that we're most proud of. And so I love that. Thank you so much for sharing. Just to add on, I've made friends with so many people in the branding and website design community. Mm-hmm. And if we ever kind of have a time where we're just self-doubting ourselves and like you kind of talked about it, just kind of looking and reflecting on how far you've come. And also what helps me, it's kind of funny, just like looking at all your testimonials, the the praise that you get, it really does help you push through those either slow times or, you know, limiting belief times. I love that. I actually had a friend of mine tell me that she has on her desktop, the folder and it's called I think she calls it like celebrations and inside there, she takes screenshots of every time her clients, even in just an email interaction, anytime her clients give her praise or anything like that, she takes a screenshot and she puts it into that folder. And when she's having these days of doubt or these imposter syndrome days, she opens that folder and she reminds herself why she's doing it. Mm -hmm. And again, talk a lot about you love working with the clients that you're working with. She loves the clients that she works with. And it's just like this beautiful reminder of why it's your reason why for doing it definitely helps you to keep going (laughs) well as we're wrapping up here i wanted to ask one last question for you and this is for our audience what is one piece of advice you'd give to someone who wants to make a career change but isn't sure if being their own boss is right for them yeah definitely i mean it kind of ties into what i've been talking about Mm -hmm. too it's really you know believing in yourself if you're thinking about having career change like there is there's something inside of you that knows that's the best thing for you to do is like, you have that gut feeling that there's something better out there for you that either, you know, having an online business will give you the freedom that you want. So Mm -hmm. just really holding on to that feeling and using that as your motivator, they call it the flame to your, (laughs) (laughs) again, it comes down to just believing in yourself and just, you know, take it step by step, day by day, it can be easy to get overwhelmed, especially when there are so many resources out there. But like I said, if you take it just day by day, do one thing every single day that will just inch you forward. And then once you kind of see the light at the end of the tunnel of like, you're ready to launch, then give yourself a due date and stick to it. Because especially if you want to get into this online space, this bucket list bombshells Academy is really like all you need to get started and to launch. And, Mm -hmm. you know, you'll kind of figure it out once you get clients and you'll go through the trial and error process, but it really helps and it holds you accountable. Absolutely. That is like on point. And I'm so, so proud of you for sticking with that date. So congratulations. Mm -hmm. You've done incredible things with your business and it's so wonderful to watch you grow. And I would love for you to share with the audience where they can learn more about you and connect with you or get more information on your business. Definitely. That you can find me on uh, Instagram mostly. It's Elena Creative Co. It's A L E I N A. I'm sure it's going to be in the notes, but <laughs> so many people spell it different ways. But yeah, you can find me on Instagram and then just shoot me a DM if this podcast resonated with you. I love to chat. And then also my website is just elenacreativeco.com. Thank you so much, Elena. This has been such a great interview. I've really enjoyed having you on the podcast. Thank you so much, Shay. The Freedom Build Live podcast is brought to you by The Bucket List Bombshells. It's hosted by me, Cassie Torresias, and my co-host, Shay Brown. If you loved today's episode, we'd be so grateful if you left us a review. Reviews help us spread the word about the Freedom Build Life podcast, and they're a key part of sharing the show with other women who believe they're made for more. Until next week, keep on pursuing your own freedom-filled life.